Okay, thank you so much. So um, as Ruby pointed out, um, I trained as a pathologist, but my journey uh, into diabetes came from a lot of like ups and downs of struggling of coming down from just clinical practice into understanding global healthcare delivery. And that's what I really want to focus on, uh, on this talk as well. Um, I'm really privileged that I got this opportunity to talk about global healthcare delivery because a lot of my research uh, at the Harvard T. H. Chan School and also at Brigham and Women's Hospital where I work in clinical research is around understanding the global health system and to understand that how we can improve clinical outcomes and reduce disparities and inequities in diabetes care, which is quite prevalent across the globe and not just in low resource settings or in um, middle income countries. So um, shifting the uh, focus for you all to understand on why we're talking about global health. Um, we all know that many low middle income countries and even low income countries are facing an epidemiological transition and often thought diabetes as a disease of the rich has broken all barriers now. We don't see it now just the disease of the upper middle class or upper class, but it has broken all this uh, all social classes and invaded into even our rural areas where where we never thought it would. So this has resulted in wide disparities and inequities. Even in our clinics, in the same population of people, we would see, commonly see some people wearing either a pump, but there are also people who are struggling to even get insulin. So the care is very skewed to the financial power, and this is very disheartening. Our health systems are not organized for long-term care of individuals, and we are very good at acute care. We are very good at managing uh, an amputation. We are very good at managing a kidney transplant. We are very good at managing the acute complications, but we don't see that there are long-term effects of these acute issues, which can result in um, much more draconian crisis um, coming with diabetes. And the management of diabetes has so many factors involved to it. And it is very deeply linked to the social determinants of health, which it brings me back to the question, is our global health system equipped to manage the clinical outcomes that diabetes is bringing along? So to understand the global diabetes burden, we all concur with the fact that diabetes is on a rise. The IDF has portrayed really terrifying statistics about diabetes being on the rise. We also know for type 1 diabetes uh, children, we have a really high number of prevalent cases of type 1. And even in India, we have around 95,000 children living with type 1 diabetes. But do we have enough care for them? We still don't know how many patients are still undiagnosed and are just being misdiagnosed as either malaria or something else, uh, which is often misdiagnosed as a type 1 diabetes. So now clearly concurring with the fact that di diabetes is on a rise, but do you see that these terrifying statistics are actually uh, what it's showing? Yes, it is on a rise, but it's not for all the bad reasons. It can be linked that the global population is rising. That's why we see that the prevalent cases have been on a rise. People with diabetes are surviving longer, which is very good and clearly shows that our global, global health systems are equipped to understand and making people survive longer. There are lesser percentage of undiagnosed cases, and this is also a positive fact that more and more people are getting more aware of diabetes and also to our healthcare teams, which are able to diagnose diabetes correctly. So to summarize the situation, we often see the rules of halves and we often uh, see that based on the total number of people living with diabetes, only half of them are actually diagnosed with diabetes. Out of those, half of them actually receive the recognized care and only half of them achieve the glycemic targets. This clearly shows there's a big challenge in diabetes care why treatment gaps exist, and improving care, especially now with the COVID pandemic kind of looming right upon us. So jumping to how we see the health systems, and we all today are integral part of that health system. Some people say, oh, we are doctors. Why are we even talking about it? Why are we even concerned about something beyond our clinics? Uh, but we have to see that we all are pivots into this healthcare system model. And it is a key element for being able to provide to the needs of people living with chronic diseases, not only to achieve better outcomes, but also to improve the overall health of the community. So yes, we need to work in collaboration and in tandem with a lot of system and ensure that there is a good policy, positive policy environment 
which can facilitate strengthening the health system. Now, a part of my research also works around establishing the targets. For years, um, HIV was considered to be a disease where people were dying alone. We did not have targets, but now HIV is considered a chronic disease. Now, if you see over the course of years, we see that diabetes is also on a rise. Are we measuring? How do we have established systems to measure these targets? Are we equipped enough? Now, I believe in the fact that what gets measured can actually get done. Now we see that, yes, there has been an accelerating progress in diabetes care everywhere, but are we going to achieve these targets? These are targets which are set up by the uh, WHO, which is also a part of my, my research to understand how equipped are we to ensure that the targets are met by 2030. So, um, yes, we are a long way ahead and we have a lot of barriers in our care model. So diabetes is unique and requires a really cross-cutting nature of care. This opens me to an interesting question. Is our can synthesizing, um, synergizing the disease-specific vertical programs, if you just cater to diabetes and just focus on the diabetes care and forget about cardiovascular diseases, forget about other, is that going to help? Uh, improve the outcomes of care or would decentralization of services improve the overall outcomes in India? I will leave you with that question. But for that matter, I'll, when we talk about global health system, when we see diabetes uh, from a global health system perspective, we cater to them as complex adaptive building blocks, understanding each of these blocks at different levels. So I would like you to see this um, WHO model of health system. And now switch, by the end of the presentation, I will also transition you to towards like how we see in a diabetes environment. So coming through each blocks, I would walk you through it, would be first being service delivery, is how healthcare is being delivered in any given context. Yes, decentralization is complex, but care should be continuous, comprehensive, coordinated. We all in India are overwhelmed with our patients. We are trying our best to give care, but because of the disparate uh, doctor-patient ratio, we are unable to give the care which we really want. We, everybody wants to give more time to the patients, but unfortunately, we're not able to do it. So thus, decentralization would have some pros, but also some cons as well. But we need to focus on a multidisciplinary team-based care model. And decentralization of services would prove essential. For that matter, I think platforms like, uh, like DiaCare is actually training providers and also general practitioners who are working at remote places where we do not have specialist care to understand how to deliver diabetes education and identify uh, patients who need urgent care and can be referred to the higher centers. That's a very crucial part of a health, health system model. Now, the health workforce also involves a lot of task shifting and a shared decision making. And that would require us as doctors and clinical providers to actually be able to deliver these services. Now, as I said, what gets measured actually gets done. Yes, we have a culture of data. Um, and listening to so many speakers out there, we have a lot of data in available, but are these information system coherent enough? Are they able to compile, generate, and analyze, synthesize the data which we are getting? And just to understand from a global health perspective, can you compare the system from India with, with somebody from outside? How do we do that? And how do we synthesize all that information for epidemiological studies? Now, switching to the other block would be do we have our resources aligned for our patients to be given that, that quality and safe care? Is it cost effective? Because if you don't have the safety and the cost effective value of that care, you would not have access. You would not be able to uh, ensure that all your patients are achieving glycemic outcomes. Yes, a lot of systems, in even in India, are based on donation bases, which are run by IDF, not-for-profits, and pharmaceutical companies, but they're often non-sustainable. So we need to equip all of that uh, through the financing systems. And this, that brings me to the next step, which is there exists no global fund for diabetes, no global fund for NCDs, and very less focus on diabetes care. Though we saw the statistics in the beginning, which was quite daunting to see that yes, when we do not have the funding, which is crucially important, just like 
uh, TB, HIV, malaria for years was often ignored, but a lot of funding went into it. So right now, diabetes doesn't have any global fund, doesn't have any NCD care funding. So why the NCD investment gap exists? But now that brings me to another point. Funding is not the only solution because funding is important, but not everything. A lot of pieces of the health system is based on all these different models and how competent are we uh, synthesizing the information we are getting from diabetes care. This definitely uh, revolves around leadership, which is the final model, uh, which also helps in building up the uh, policy environment. So as we see, saw these WHO models, I would like to transition to you to, towards a functional diabetes care system, how we can integrate care from our clinics, also ensure that there is a value-based, task-shifting, team-based care, because yes, we need to measure the clinical outcomes. For that, you need integrated care delivery and how we can enhance the medication and commodity access for a patient. Do we have competent research available, electronic hospital records available for appropriate data generation and ensuring that we have a uh, visible priority, a policy prioritization of diabetes. Um, that would re require a lot of coordination and cooperation for that matter. Uh, we have a lot of health system research happening. Um, this is from one of the research papers which we published recently and also by the work done by Dr. David Biran that yes, decentralization would help in the burden of diabetes, but this decentralization doesn't have to be through one level, not only through vertical, but also through horizontal cross-cutting integration. Yes, it has to happen at micro levels, but also requires a lot of work at the health system level from meso, macro, and ultimately to global outcomes. Uh, so to summarize, um, I know this doesn't answer the question simply uh, uh, that decentralization helps, but it is also not a clear solution. Health systems do not have the capacity to care for those who are living with diabetes. Most systems do not integrate. We have a lot of, lot of good data available in India, but we need to comprehensively integrate all of that and organize the roles. Now we understand that diabetes requires a lot of self-management. We need to ensure that there is safe, effective, quality assured delivery being done for our patients and also ensuring that there is proper prioritization and there is sustainability in our care. So um, yes, my talk, my talk really kind of summarizes about what our research is focused on. It is quite vast, but a lot of it is focused on synergistic integration and focusing on disease specific programs like diabetes and health system research will is required to investigate the needs of people. Yes, we need to integrate that a lot of health professionals need to adapt to this new paradigm where the role of disease management will be less effective in the clinics, but also being adapted to the individuals who are managing it at home. So we need to ensure that people with diabetes receive the care and support they need effectively to manage their condition and also ensure that the entire health system is competent enough to do that. For that matter, we saw that COVID-19 kind of rolled us all out of our zones and that requires planning and preparedness. Do we have access to insulin for our patients? Do we have access to, to even SGLT2 inhibitors and also for type two diabetes management? Do we have enough drugs for our patient to survive and ensure, especially in times of humanitarian crisis? Now, a lot of people ask me that, oh, US has a lot of, uh, a lot of facilities available and there's diabetes care and outcomes should be good. But no, even in the best of the finance equipped health system, there are so, such complexities in care. There are wide disparities and inequities and variability in insulin pricing that yes, we are not achieving the diabetes outcomes. And like I pointed out in the beginning, when we talked about the rules of halves, out of the 50% people who diagnosed with diabetes, only 50% of people are actually achieving their glycemic outcome. That clearly shows that we are failing. Yes, we could be doing very well in small term goals, but overall we are still failing in achieving the output of diabetes care globally. So um, this is all about what my research kind of revolves around understanding the disparities of care. And um, I am happy to answer any additional questions and also happy to um, collaborate on further research in this area. So feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity.